I'm, uh, I'm Ken Phelps. I'm the uh, rector of All Saints Church and uh, a big fan of chili. Uh, I do my best to uh, uh, create something that at least I'll eat and uh, I've had some success at that. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here and just, uh, uh, just share my thoughts about uh, a dish that I'm really only just scraping the surface with, but I uh, hope to, uh, uh, in my retirement, perhaps uh, become quite the, uh, quite the maven with that. Uh, well, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, good morning, everyone, and uh, good to be here. Uh, okay, I've got my pot heating. And uh, the disclaimer I'll make first of all, well, there's several. The first was that we may not, you know, you're not going to see a finished product. This has got to go for some hours as it simmers and and uh, and uh, kind of lets the uh, the spices uh, permeate uh, uh, the uh, the ingredients and let them each, you know, make their contributions to what uh, what is there. That's why too, chili is always better on day two and three uh, when you make it. And uh, we make it to a story about uh, a particular batch of chili that. Uh, didn't necessarily go wrong, but it was uh, kind of funny at the time. And, and we'll, you know, we'll get there as we talk about different ingredients. So um, just to kind of share what I've got here. Like I said, I sent the recipe uh, to everyone. And like this morning, you know, I've got, we've got our dry ingredients, which, uh, the olive oil here, which includes uh, you know, salt and, uh, and uh, the oregano. We have a uh, cumin here and also two types of uh, the chili powder. One is the, uh, you know, plain old kind you get at the uh, grocery store, and the other is the uh, secret ingredient, uh, extra extra hot uh, uh, ground or powdered uh, red chilies, which uh, in theory at least will give us uh, uh, a little bit more uh, fire than uh, normally might have been there. But I find you still have to add to that. So we've kind of got a hybrid you know, thing going here. I've got some green chilies that I cooked up again for, you know, this is like, this is like the string section, you know, mild kind of, you know, moves you into this and uh, onions and garlic. Uh, I'm using stew meat this morning uh, because again, this is, a, this is a slow cook, ultimately a long range thing. You want a meat that's gonna, you know, just kind of get soft um, and, uh, you know, very, uh, very tender as, as things develop. But again, that's, and then that's me. I've got to tell you, it was about, uh, it's about 25 years ago that uh, my chili life changed. And uh, I went into a place that many of you know now because I've dragged you there, which is Nacho Mama's in Canton. And uh, I had a bowl of their chili autentico. And all it was, uh, was large chunks of stew meat, incredibly tender, uh, a uh, I think chilies, uh, and uh, a very interesting bourbon-based uh, broth uh, with all the seasoning. And I thought, wow. Uh, it's like I opened a door into another world as far as chili was concerned. And uh, I've never duplicated their recipe or tried to because I like to add things with the meat, like to get, uh, you know, other things in. You know, I can't look at chili without thinking of kidney beans or some kind of bean being in it. And again, Martha, that's being raised with the canned stuff where, you know, they're always, a, you know, an ingredient, you know, in those things. Though I've made it without beans before, but I've substituted other vegetables. And that's uh, this was called, uh, I think, the uh, uh, just kind of the word of mouth working title for this was experimental chili. And they're all experimental because they're all a little different each time. And you really do this as much by sight and taste as you do it by anything else as you, uh, as you begin to develop it. And uh, where we're going to start today, if I can move over to my little pot. Yeah, here's the olive oil. That's... <laughs> I don't know how much that is, but it's enough to cover the bottom of the pot, get things hopping here. Already getting a nice smoke off of it, which I'm going to cut this back a little bit. Uh, but let's start just by uh, getting the onions going. <laughs> That's a nice sound. I don't know how much the fan, can you still hear me? Can you still Ken, hear me? what was that little blob that wasn't onions? I'm sorry, Cindy, what? What was the little blob that wasn't onions? Oh, that's garlic. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the fan on a little bit. I hope, uh, I've got the mic right here, so I hope you can still uh, hear me. 
Uh, shout out if you if you can't. And again, this is just you know all part of the prep. The first stage, if you will. Add just a little more oil. I like I like big chunks of onion in my chili. I'm going to throw in the green chilies that I've sliced. Ken, when you say green chili, do you mean like ancho chilies or cubanelles or? A, a very mild uh, green chili. Okay. And, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, like I say, not a chef. I just kind of invent, you know, make this up as I go along with it. Okay, that looking pretty good. I'm going to add the meat just to get that brown. And I use, uh, when I'm using meat, usually about a pound. If you're keeping score, I think this is 1.19 pounds of sea meat. And we're just going to get it brown. Work it with the onions. And put it. That's already smelling really good. And again, a lot of this stuff is just for the aesthetics of it. Uh, you know, I'm not using... Uh, you know, the conventional red and green peppers today, though when I make veggie chili, you know, they're quite prominent. And again, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's the aesthetics, it's the way the thing looks. And see, I don't know about you, but I think this is, this is just, this is just very beautiful to me. With, uh, with the onion, the green chili, and the meat cooking. And so that's the thing with chili too. A lot of this is hurry up and wait. Uh, you know, we get this stuff rolling like this and then, uh, and then once we get the initial uh, ingredients all kind of mixed together, they really, uh, then it's that patient waiting game until you get to the next, uh, the next point in the, uh, yeah, I don't want to call it the recipe, but that next point in the uh, production. And again, too, just getting the meat brown here, uh, not worried about thoroughly cooking it because it's going to be simmering here for three or four hours at least. Which is why I say I'm not making lunch, I'm making dinner here, maybe. And that's looking pretty good. Now, in no short order, we'll add our stewed tomatoes. Quieted things down. <laughs> and our dry ingredients, but not the uh, not the cayenne pepper yet, or the paprika, or the uh, the uh, crushed uh, hot reds. We'll mix that in real good. Boy, the aroma is fantastic at this point. Now you begin to see the broth taking on the more traditional red color. And again, not to sound or risk sound sounding like I know what I'm doing, but isn't that a pretty pot at this point? Give me a little better look. If you turn the lights on in here, you can see it a little better. Absolutely beautiful. 
I was like, yeah, I like it. Now that we have that in, now we add the, uh, the extra special ingredient. And I mentioned Nacho Mama's with their bourbon-based uh, chili that, uh, that really kind of changed my life. And I've used different uh, liquids in here. You'll see recipes that ask for like a cup of water or two cups of water or tomato juice or a, a tomato paste or sauce just to kind of build up the, uh, the broth. I uh, have uh, tried just about everything uh, to, uh, you know, as part of my chili. And I'm going to see, I'm going to add a few more tomatoes to this. Like I say, there are kind of a few more ingredients. 28 ounces would have worked, but I'm going to have a lot of other stuff in here. So I'm just going to add a few more tomatoes. But um, I have tried uh, red wine on occasion, which is very nice. I've used uh, beer. Uh, Carol Shelby has a recipe for chili where it's a 12 ounce can of beer that he uses. And to me, that's okay. But I got spoiled by Nacho Mama's. So I uh, try to make this a bourbon based chili like theirs, at least in that respect. Yeah, that's looking real good now. I put in another 15 ounce can. And again, like I said, you just kind of kind of look at it, you know, it's a lot of this is done by sight, how it is. And um, at this point, I just add a little bourbon to get that process going as well. Ken, you said diced tomatoes when we started are on the recipe, and then when you were putting it in, you said stewed. Do you oh, I'm sorry, no, those? I didn't mean that. They, I mean, they will, they will cook down, and uh, you know, as, as you go through this. But no, I, I didn't mean to say stewed. It's diced. They are diced. Thank you. But now just a a little bourbon. Yeah. Just because we can. And I used to use a lot more. Um, when I make it a big batch, it's not unusual for a, like a half a bottle to go in. If you go, oh God, the rector puts a half a bottle of uh, bourbon into his uh, chili. But again, a big batch and it does cook down, but it's the way it enhances the flavor of the spices. It's just something about the blend uh, of the bourbon with uh, the chili. It's just, uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's a sensational mix. And again, now if you could, if you could smell what I'm smelling now, is those two kind of collide together, and uh, it's really quite aromatic. You know, uh, um, aromatic. I was going to be making chili um, one morning, and then I was going to go off to work and just kind of let it simmer. The boys were going to go off to school, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this is a pre-daughter Molly. But um, I'd asked Diane. I said, "Look, before you head out." Uh, if you would uh, put a half a fifth in there, and just let stir it in and let it uh, let it go, you know, for the for the day, and she said, "Yeah, that's yeah, I'll do that." And so, uh, rather absentmindedly, I put it in already when I before I left, and uh, just stirred it in and left. And then uh, when she left, she saw the bottle and put the other half in. So we had an entire fifth of bourbon in uh, in the chili. We had an entire fifth of. Uh, the bourbon in this chili. For how and, much meat? Pardon me? For how much meat? Uh, about a pound. Oh, God. <laughs> and a lot of beans and this, that, the other. And it does cook down. And and so we're sitting there having dinner that night. And um, we just realized that it was becoming a very happy dinner. And we couldn't figure out what was going on. And then I, I said uh, to Diane, I said, uh, did you put bourbon in here? She goes, yeah, she, you asked me to. And I said, oh, I said, yeah. Because I, I forgot that, and I, I put I put some in too, so we realized what had gone wrong. But that was, uh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong; it it, it tasted great, <laughs> but uh, it was a, it was it was for mature audiences only. So we had to stop the boys and say, "I think we've had enough. We'll move to something else here." The other thing I, I tried too, and this is the. Uh, I'm blaming, uh, it used to be in Annapolis. There was an Irish uh, uh, restaurant there along uh, the front street. Uh, I think it was called Reardon's. Is that, am I remembering this incorrectly? Yes, there is Reardon's. Yeah, but they had a, uh, they had a Guinness beef stew. And I tried that and thought, boy, that was really good. 
And I thought, what about a Guinness chili? Right. So I made the Guinness chili and it was, it was like another ill-fated chili. I tried to make a chocolate mole chili once and uh, that was disastrous. Uh, but this Guinness almost you know, duplicated that. I mean, it, it was just the way that, that stout beer in, in, and maybe it was just the batch, just did not blend well uh, with the other things that were going on. So uh, again, I haven't gotten back on that horse again, but that's why I put it back. <laughs> not Guinness, don't do it. Um, but again, it, it's, that's why I say it's a matter of taste and that we're really kind of working this you know, to uh, really suit our own taste buds as we're, as, uh, we're creating this. I'm gonna slip back here a minute. It's starting to boil, which is a good thing. Hmm. Really smells good. So now we can uh, we can sit around and swap stories for a minute. <laughs> I was so heartened by Jeff uh, Pike last week because uh, everything was over in 20 minutes. And uh, with this, obviously everything is about over in 20 minutes as far as the uh, basic uh, uh, you know, creation of, of the chili. But uh, now it's the, as I said, the waiting game. And what's going to come in next? We have beans. Uh, for today's meal, I uh, decided on uh, kidney and black bean. Though uh, I've used other uh, you know, varieties, but that would be... Uh, going into the mix today. I mean, right now it just smells great. And it's, uh, again, that combination of uh, the bourbon, I can, you know, sense that coming off of it. And uh, this that interplay with the other spices. And two, this will thicken up as we, uh, as it also begins to uh, cook off and boil down and then simmer. Do you have any questions or? Um... Yes, I do. How much liquid did you put in there at this point? Uh, <laughs> roughly. I mean, a no, half roughly. a cup? Maybe, half. maybe a half a cup. And like I say, in a little while, I'll, I'll check that and see how, you know, where the flavor is, where the mix is, and also check the heat of it uh, to see uh, how hot uh, it is. And it's, it's not going to have much bite at this point. And I think I said, and just for lack of, uh, you know, sense, really, in the recipe uh, I sent out, I talked about uh, having a teaspoon uh, of the uh, of the crushed uh, red peppers. Maybe just you know just start to sprinkle, and you know to taste and see you know where it is and what you can tolerate as far as the, the heat is concerned. There are other ways to get there too. I've used different chilies. Uh, you know, the habanera is a great chili to use, but again, it's it, it's you know just watching you know volume, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Uh, knowing how much you've got in the pot and uh, and just kind of measuring out um, how much, you know, it's taste, how much you can take. And one thing with peppers, too, is that the next day, the heat has increased. Yeah. So you kind of have to know what you can tolerate tomorrow. Yeah, and like I say, this, this may be as far as you want to go. Uh, with what I have in the pot now, and it's boiling good, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit to let it start simmering. If, if you were not using meat, what other vegetables would you use, Ken? I think it's, you know, it's really anything you want to throw in. Like I said, I, I would use a variety of peppers. I mean, again, what I would call conventional, not the, not the hot peppers. Uh, you know, I've thrown corn and lima beans at times. Uh, you know, it's whatever, um, you know, whatever suits you at that, at that moment. Uh, it's because again, it's the it's 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 the broth that that uh, that carries it, and uh, that mix of the spices and uh, and the heat you bring to it. Ken, at what point do you put the beans in? About an hour in, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll throw those in, and I also that's the time. Ah, the raisins. See, <laughs> this is the controversial part of. Uh, I'm, I'm realizing in two places now, but this is the controversial part of, uh, of my chili cooking. And I don't know where it was uh, that uh, I discovered raisins in chili. And maybe it wasn't even chili. But, uh, you know, these, these dried little raisins, when you, when you plop them in there, as they cook, will suddenly start to plump up. 
as the uh, juices, uh, you know, invade. And uh, you've almost got, not quite a grape, but it looks like a black bean. It's like jelly bellies. You never know what you're going to get till you bite in. And uh, with that raisin in there, and it's been, you know, simmering forever in these spices, you take a bite of that raisin and you're suddenly hit with this combination of sweet and heat. And uh, I really like that. Uh, others in the household, uh, you know, aren't big fans of it, but uh, my son puts it in his chili in California. So, and again, that's something, yeah, that's something else you can add to vegetarian chili. But I like the raisins. Thanks. Yeah, I remember the raisins. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the controversy too. Then. <laughs> I have a chili recipe that's vegetarian, and I put uh, rutabaga and butternut squash cubes in it. So just for something else to put yeah. in chili that's not meat. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think it's really you know, whatever your imagination is. I mean, you know, ultimately to me, again, it's always the broth. It comes back to that. And uh, what do you, you know, how are the spices blending? How much heat do you bring to it? Uh, in this case, uh, you know, how much, uh, <laughs> how much outside help do you bring in from red wine or beer or, uh, or uh, you know, a bourbon? I mean, it's it's simple enough. And uh, and uh, again, like I said, recipe. You know, I don't I don't really think about that because it just kind of comes together. Uh, and uh, then you sit and and you wait. And, uh, I should have made a batch last night and then tasted it and said, hmm, see, this is what you get. And also toppings for it. My wife's a big fan of uh, sour cream and uh, cheese. I like to use a really sharp cheddar uh, when I top it uh, with cheese. Uh, you know, lime slices also work very well. I like having uh, all kinds of breads. I mentioned cornbread. Uh, uh, it was uh, No Way Jose's in South Baltimore years ago. When you order chili there, it would come on a block of uh, cornbread. Uh, we just, that would be the, the topping for it. It's almost like pie a la mode. And uh, I thought that was delicious. Uh, and again, so that's the raisin thing. Again, it's that combination of sweet and heat uh, that, that comes from that. So I, I really like cornbread with uh, chili, um, you know, uh, corn chips and, and whatnot are also, you know, good. Um, crackers is kind of traditional, but that, I, I also like to break those up in, in, in chili. It depends on my mood you know, that day. But again, it's, it's your imagination, you know, as to how you garnish it and, uh, and how you ultimately uh, will eat it. I've seen some recipes where you do a blend of, uh, of coarse ground beef and uh, pork and, uh, you know, those combinations. And uh, uh, the authors of those recipes talk about how just what a, you know, delightful combination that is. And uh, others have uh, written about them and said, yeah, I mean, there are some prize winning uh, chilies from the uh, big, uh, chili cook-off they have in the Southwest each year. The name is escaping me, uh, but that's where I ran across Carol Shelby's recipe. But um, again, it's just, you know, it's, I just go back to that. It's, uh, you never know what is going into the pot, you know, when you start, it's ingredients at hand, you pick stuff up. I've always got something here that I could use to make chili, so. Have you ever done white, white chicken chili? No, I haven't. <laughs> That's fun too. Yeah, no, I bet it would. It goes back to the sauce, you know, the, the broth that, that's holding it all. And uh, this one looks, I, I should give it a taste. It's early yet. I was going to have a uh, an old Steve Miller song playing in the background as it was doing this called Hot Chili. And uh, the one lyric is, it's hotter than June, it'll melt your spoon. So. Yeah, see, that's good. You can see I'm going to need a little more bourbon and a little more bite, but it's early yet. It's early. So just to show you again, I'm, um, I'm going to go a little early on this. I'm going to add my little pinch of cayenne pepper. And a little paprika, just because we can. To hold off on the peppers. I'll throw the beans in, let you see what it looks like when it's uh, nearing uh, completion.
Again, the aesthetics. Every ingredient brings its own color and shape. A very diverse pot. That's, it. <laughs> That's really about it. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Oh no, you're welcome. I mean, this is a, this is an easy thing to fix. Uh, even when you're just not opening cans, Martha, this is an easy thing to do. <laughs> I did cut everything up early, but, uh, you know, I've been stretching this out and it's, you know, it's 30 minutes, but you saw it's less time than that to, uh, to pull this thing together. Oh, I forgot the raisins. See? Beautiful uh -huh. Oh, man. I'm putting raisins in, honey. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, they look like the black beans. That's what I like about them. They're camouflaged, you know. I, no, I've, never heard, I, I've never heard of that. I think I'll try it sometime. Yeah, me either. When Cheryl and I were dating, we had an almost disaster chili. I've had those. <laughs> because I used, I used the recipe from um, the newspaper that I got back when the... Um, Harbor Place in Baltimore was being set up. They had a chili contest of all these different places and they picked Nevada Annie's chili. And it called for, and that for 10 pounds of ground round. So I have this and I would make it and freeze it and it was wonderful. So I was dating Cheryl and we were at the Renaissance Festival and we were in that little place where they have the dried spices. <coughs> oh, you're gonna make chili. I don't know what these are, but let's put a couple of these in. Well, they were Scotch bonnets. Neither of us had any idea what a scotch bonnet was. So we threw two of them in. Oh. We had to throw in more tomatoes, more just about everything, rice, just to get it so that I didn't have to throw away 10 pounds of meat. <laughs> and that's, and that's, that's the cool thing about chili. It's, you, you, never, you can always rescue it. Thanks, Ken. It was wonderful. That is so pretty. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Looks great. Oh, it does. Well, thanks. Yeah, it is. It. Yeah, I. Uh, that's the thing. It's. It's the aesthetics and the taste. Thank you, Ken. Oh, you're welcome. And, and again, like I say, this will be. This will be in its peak tomorrow, it and then Monday. Yeah, Good. So. We when but, we get all back together, we need another chili cook-off. Yeah, we do. There we go. But again, yeah. the secret here with the simmering is you want to let it go for a while because you want that stew meat to come nice and tender and stringy. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So. Sounds great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.